if you got five. I don't think there's five. Anyways, hey, if you have your Bibles, we got a, we got a lot in store tonight. Um, it has been a powerful weekend. Uh, this is an Easter tradition. Don't know how many years we've been doing this, but for quite a few. Um, gosh, I want to say over 10. Uh, we, we give testimony. And typically the uh, Resurrection Sunday message is preached by you. And we've done this all weekend. We've shared probably over 100 testimonies uh, over the course of two services, and we'll probably hear another 50 tonight. And so I'll give you instructions on how we're going to do that, but I want to tee it up a little bit. And so if you have your Bibles, go to Acts chapter 2. It is Resurrection Sunday. This is the most important day of our faith. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, our faith is in vain. Uh, Jesus conquering death. The grave being empty is central to your faith. Your faith is in what he accomplished for you. Your faith, we sing about it for about 30 minutes. It's not about perfection, performance. It's not about earning. It's about what he's done. It's about the shed blood of Jesus. It's trusting in his work for you. And the resurrection, the resurrection, the resurrection, the resurrection is so significant because it was a man who was alive and he died. And he rose again. <laughs> He's the only man to ever die to rise again and to stay risen. He's still risen right now. Eternally will he be the resurrected one. Still has holes in his hands, holes in his feet. He, he still bears the marks of death, but he conquered death. And so I wanna show you, I wanna show you um, how central the resurrection is in, in the early church. It's, it's, they couldn't get over it. Um, they performed signs and wonders, but it wasn't about the signs and wonders, it was what the signs and wonders testified to, testified to his resurrection. It was all unto the resurrection of Jesus. It was never about a person, it was never about a people, it was about the man Christ Jesus and what he accomplished for us. And so the first sermon, Acts chapter two, I didn't do this this morning, but it's just on my heart to lead you through a couple of chapters in the book of Acts. And I'm gonna point you to this theme over and over and over again. And then we're gonna look at the first uh, message that was ever proclaimed by Mary. So Acts chapter two, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, they run to the Southern steps uh, in Jerusalem, Southern steps of the temple. They go from the upper room to the Southern steps and Peter begins preaching. And we know at least 3,000 people were in an earshot of what he was saying because 3,000 people were saved of all nationalities as well. And uh, uh, in Acts chapter 2, um, verse 29, he points this reality. He says, brethren, brethren, I may confidently say to you regarding the patriarch David. So David was kind of the hallmark of biblical leadership. They're looking for the son of David. We talked about that last week. So he's pointing to David, and then he's going he's gonna to use J- David and point to Jesus. But this is what he says about David. Brethren, I confidently may say uh, to you regarding the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. And so, because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to seat one of his descendants on his throne, he looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection. And it was the resurrection of the Christ, and he would neither be abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. And then verse 32 is kind of the thesis of the first sermon ever preached, and this is what Peter says. This Jesus God raised up again, to which we are all witnesses of that fact. Jesus is alive, and we are witnesses. This word for witness it's a word you're familiar with in the, uh, in the Greek. Uh, the English word that we get from this word witness is martyr. It's martus. So to be a martyr, when we think of martyrdom, we think of one that has given their life for their faith. They wouldn't deny their witness even unto death. And so if you're a believer in Jesus, you're a martus. You're a martyr. You're one who's witnessed the resurrection of Jesus, and you live life in light of that reality. And Peter was saying, hey, listen, this Christ whom you crucified is risen, and we can testify to you that he's risen. Go to the next chapter, Acts chapter 3. Same guy, Peter, walking uh, through the uh, beautiful, I think it was called the gate that was beautiful. Acts chapter 3, they're going to the place of prayer, Peter and John. Um, 
verse four, it says, but Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on this man who was begging, receiving alms. And look at what Peter says. I love this. Peter says in verse four, look at us. You who are in need, look at us. And he began giving them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Verse six, but Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Sees him by the right hand, he raised him to his feet. So this man starts jumping, praising God, starts this big commotion, verse 11. While this man whose legs were healed, was clinging to Peter and John, all the people ran together. And they were in the portico of Solomon. And they were in full amazement. But when Peter saw this, he replied to them, men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? And I love, I love this. And why do you gaze at us? Now, how was this man healed? He was healed because Peter used the same word. He said, fix your gaze on who? Me. And what I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus, arise and walk. But now everyone's looking at these two men who healed this crippled man. And he's saying, stop looking at us. Why? Because what we did is to point to someone else. Look, verse 14, or verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, the one whom you delivered and disowned in the presence of Pilate, when he decided to release him, but you disowned the holy and the righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. But put to death the prince of life, the one whom God raised from the dead, a fact which we are all witnesses of. This was so central to the gospel. It was so central to the early church. The acts that they did, the things that they did, all testified that Jesus Christ was resurrected. Next chapter. You want some more? All right, chapter four. Uh, They were arrested. Got them in trouble. Your witness could get you in trouble. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And in verse eight, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man as to how this man has been made well. Verse 10, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name, this man stands before you in good health. It's because of the resurrection that healing power flowed through these disciples. It was testifying that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. I love verse 13. It says, now as they observe the confidence of Peter and John, your witness will give you confidence to proclaim his resurrection. They understood, verse 13, that they were uneducated and untrained men. They were amazed and began to recognize them as having been with Jesus. This is what marked the early disciples. Not that they had just been with him, pre-death, but they were walking with him after death because he's alive. I could keep pointing to you. Uh, End of verse four, look at this. This is an, an early church prayer meeting, verse 32. And the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonged to them was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And abundant grace was upon them all. Abundant grace was upon them because they were testifying that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. Listen, this message, it's 2,000 years old. And there have literally been hundreds of millions of people who can testify that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And it's not just because they read scriptures. Scriptures point to that. It's not just because they heard preaching and believed. Although preaching and believing is important, it's because they had a personal encounter with the resurrected one. His resurrection has power today because he's still revealing himself as the one who has conquered sin, death, the grave on your behalf. And the witness of the Holy Spirit coming and testifying to your heart, this reality gives you hope. This is the hope of the gospel. 
The hope of the gospel is that Jesus Christ conquered death, that death does not have the last word, that disease does not have the last word, that divorce does not have the last word, that decisions you made this weekend do not have the last word, that Jesus Christ is Lord of lords, he is King of kings, he who was, uh, he who was risen ascended, was exalted, and now is seated at the right hand of his Father, who is the creator of the universe. And it's a demonstration of his love. It's a demonstration of his kindness. It's a demonstration of his nature. It's a demonstration. He could reveal himself in any way, and he chose to reveal himself through the cross, by bearing your sin, by paying your debt, by dying your death so that you could live his life. This is the gospel message and we never need to tire of it. Go to Matthew chapter 28. This is Resurrection Sunday. Mary Magdalene and the mother of Mary came to the grave at dawn of a Sunday morning after Sabbath. And, and this will set up our testimony time because in verse two, they have this supernatural experience. It's a dramatic experience. It's angelic, it's divine, it's spiritual. They encounter an angel. And the word says that this angel, as he descended, there was an earthquake. The earthquake shook, shook the ground. This angel from heaven rolls away the stone and the angel sits upon it. And as he's sitting upon the stone in verse three, it says his appearance was like lightning. Now, I don't know if that was like a lightning strike or literally a lightning bolt before them, but this is a a dramatic scene. These women are looking for Jesus. They're coming to his tomb. I'm assuming they remembered he said, I will be, I will, uh, I will resurrect in three days. I don't know where the other 12 were or 11 were, Um, I know where one of them was. Uh, And his clothing was as white as snow. So lightning, clothing, white as snow. And the Roman guards who were sent there by the the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, to guard the tomb, knowing that he said he would come out of the grave in three days, they put these guards there. And so the guards are shaking with fear, and they became like dead men. And the angel said to Mary and Mary. The angel said this, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. And he gives them, this angel gives them a report. For I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. You need to know that he's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see, come and look at the place where he was lying. Now these women most likely laid his body there. We know that they were tending to the body of Jesus. So they had seen probably his body in this place. But he's saying, look, the body's gone. Jesus is not here. He's risen. Just as he said, he would arise. And then verse seven, from this place of you seeing the empty tomb, having this spiritual dramatic encounter, here's what I want you to do in verse seven. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen. Go and testify to what you've seen. He's risen from the dead, and behold, he's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. You will see him in the Galilee. Now, they were in Jerusalem. The Galilee was on the out, it was was, was away from Jerusalem. It was some distance from Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee. And so he's saying, listen, tell them to go into the Galilee, and there they will see him resurrected. You will see him resurrected. Go, I've told you. And so they left the tomb in verse eight quickly with fear and great joy. These two emotions hit you when you realize that Jesus Christ is resurrected. Fear and great joy. There's bewilderment, there's this mystery, but there's a solidity, there's there's a faith that hits your heart. Fear and great joy. I love that the Bible says they left with fear and great joy and they were running to the disciples. Now, this is all they needed. They had a testimony. They had an encounter. They had a report. This is all that they needed. And even the angels seemed to know something that they did not. Listen, Jesus has gone ahead of you. Go out to the Sea of Galilee where he walked on the water, where he multiplied the fish and bread. He's going to meet you there. You're going to see him there. 
But something happens, and I think this is so important for us to understand when we think of the resurrected Jesus. Because Jesus himself, and I think it was in his love and in his kindness for Mary and Mary, verse nine happens. Jesus didn't go to the Galilee. Jesus intercepted those that were running with this report and had this encounter. And in verse nine, it says this, and behold, Jesus met them. And it says, and greeted them. Now in my NASB, the holiest of Bibles right here, I have a little asterisk and it says, I greeted them. It says, and Jesus met them and asterisk, you can read greeted them, but you can go to the side column and it says, it could also read this. Jesus met them and asterisk said, hello. (laughs) Jesus said, hello. Can you imagine? Massive encounter, angel, lightning, white as snow, soldiers, fearful like dead man, great joy, bewilderment and fear. You've got a report. And then Jesus just goes, hello. (laughs) What? A resurrected man. Jesus said hello to them. And the only response, the only right response, this is what we built our community on, the only right response is to fall at his feet and worship him. When he says hello, when he says hello, not not, not, not that you you heard it on TikTok or uh, even a service like this, I'm grateful for them. These are... These, these are a means to something greater and it's you encountering the realities that we're preaching. Yes. Because, because when he says hello to you in your muck, in your mire, when he says hello to you for the first time, you are in a place, you were in a place where you needed a savior. You were in a place where you needed the resurrected one to come into your life and say, hello, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life, I'm the gate. I've conquered death, Hades, the grave. Hello, it is me. (laughs) I've been preaching this and I always hear Adele. Hello, it's me. You know, like, and you see Jesus. Like, think of that. Like, like if 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 you're in bondage tonight to pornography, you need Jesus to say hello to you. If you're, if you're in immorality tonight, if you're in habitual sins, cycles of sin, you're living a life of duplicity, you need Jesus to step into that duplicity and say, hello. When he says hello, there's life on those words. There's hope in those words. There's faith that he authors in those words. And it's sourced by the Holy Spirit who resurrected Jesus from the dead. And that same spirit that resurrected him from the dead, as you make that confession, it comes and lives inside of you. Ha! What does that mean? What does that mean? It means you can eternally forever live with hope. You can live with life, resurrection life. You can live not fearful of death, knowing that when you do die, it's just a door into the eternal realm because you are living in relationship with one that conquered the death. He's got the keys to death and Hades. You do not need to be afraid. He will eternally be faithful to you because he won't stop saying hello. He won't stop pursuing you. He won't stop coming after you. He is relentless in his pursuit of you, knowing that he conquered these things for you. He loves you. He is faithful. He is good. He's got this thing figured out, and he wants you to trust him. He wants you to declare that you're my Lord, that you're my King, that you're my God, and my life is no longer my own. It has been purchased, and the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who gave himself for me. This is New Testament Christianity. It's New Testament Christianity. This reality changes everything. It's not a box that you check. It doesn't matter if you go to church. You will go to church. It's the fruit of your faith, but it's not about church. It's not about services. It's not about, all these things are important, but they need to be unto you connecting to the resurrected one that continues to say hello. 
Every morning, you can hear, hello. I'm still on the throne. I still am alive. I'm still faithful. I'm still good. My mind has not changed. It's still made up. I'm for you. I'm not against you. I am love forever, eternally. I love you. And my love casts out fear. My love is stronger than death. My love changes everything. You, you change. Me, I don't. I know that things shake. I know that seasons change, but I am eternal. And I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. My mind is made up. My plans for you are made up. You trusting me in this, it's the key. It's the key. Jesus knows that Mary and Mary, isn't there a band, Mary, Mary? I keep thinking of that. So Mary, Mary, they're running with this report. And, and Jesus in his, I think, I think, I think he just couldn't, oops, shoraba. I think, I think, I think he just couldn't resist. He couldn't resist. You know, he's listening. The angels sent, it says in Psalms 103, I think it's verse 19-ish, it says angels do the bidding of God's word. So this angel sent by the word of God. He's fulfilling the plan. And I think Jesus is, you know, listening to it all. They're hearing it. They're bewildered, fear, joyful. They have the report. And I think Jesus couldn't resist just going, psst, hello, <laughs> hello. And in that moment, these women go from carrying a report that after they encounter him, they actually become the report. And here's what I mean, is because when Mary gets to the disciples that are shut up in the upper room, fearful, scared, she breaks through the doors, and here's what she says. She doesn't talk about the angels, she doesn't talk about the dramatic encounter, she doesn't talk about the lightning, she doesn't talk about the clothes, doesn't talk about the Roman soldiers, doesn't talk about the stone being rolled away, doesn't talk about the grave empty. Here's what she says, it's five words. I have seen the Lord. That was the gospel. I have seen the Lord. I've seen him. I've seen him. I know all the facts. I had a heavenly encounter, but I met the man with fire in his eyes. I met the man with holes in his hands. And I'm here to tell you that he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> like, it's true. You get messed up, man. When you, start, when you start thinking about it, you get messed up. You get messed up. Something isn't right with those that put their faith in this one and live for him. I, I, just, I just got this hope. I know. I mean, even the disciples, after they heard this, you would think they would be like, what? No. It says, I think it says that they were actually in unbelief and Jesus walks through the walls. He's like, what's up, boys? You know, like, ha <laughs> Like, hello. And he breathes upon them. The Holy Spirit. And so here's the, here's the truth. In this room, we've got reports. In this room, there's people that have encountered the resurrected one. For me, Abilene, Texas, 1998, Maymester, Eastern Oaks Apartments, apartment 101. I was living in an apartment by myself for the first time. I was probably 20, 21 years old. And I, I don't know if Jesus himself came into that room, but I know the Holy Spirit did. And I don't know if I audibly heard my voice, but or heard a voice, but I thought I did. And it was my name. And it was as if I was hearing my name for the first time. And I knew who it was. And I knew what he was asking for. And I had been at a Christian university, grown up in a church, heard all about Jesus. But something in that moment changed my life forever. And those that know me testify, Michael was different. Wasn't perfect. <laughs> Still not. I'm a broken mess. But I had an encounter. Jesus said hello to me. My religious paradigms and boxes were broken. I knew what he was asking. I didn't know what to do. And all I could tell him is, Jesus, I'll give you tomorrow. I'll entrust myself to you tomorrow. 
It just went day by day by day, and he started to reveal himself time and time again as the resurrected one in my life. And man, it has been a hard journey. It has been a glorious journey. It has been a beautiful journey. But I am now been walking with him for 27 years. And this reality, it's still sweet. It's still beautiful. It's still the hope of my life and the foundation of all that I am and am building my life upon. And I want to encourage you, if, if you're just a you know, yearly Easter attender, we're grateful that you're here, but there's so much more. There is so much more. And my prayer is that it's you hear testimonies tonight, that you'll be provoked. And if it happened to someone in this room, if he's done it in their life, he can do it in yours. There's, there's a realm of faith that comes through a declared testimony. And so I've got a script behind me. They're going to put it up. You can get your phone out or you can write it on a card, but I want you to testify tonight. We're probably not going to be able to get to everyone. Uh, we have two mics on the side and then two people that will be gatekeepers of sorts. We'll make lines. And for the next, oh, 40 minutes, we're going to give testimony to this. I have seen the risen Lord. It is true that he no longer is in the grave, but has been risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my, and then I want you to talk about a moment in your life when he said hello to you. We've, we heard a woman this morning, she, uh, she was bound up in prostitution. He said hello to her. We heard of someone today that was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. He said hello to her. We've testified a father on Saturday night. There was a father whose two-year-old was diagnosed. They got the phone call when they're in a noon prayer time meeting from an oncologist that the two-year-old was uh, diagnosed with leukemia. And testified that the Lord said hello to them in that moment and has walked with this family for the last year. That child is now leukemia free. So powerful. And so here's, here's all I'm saying is, is that these testimonies are real. These testimonies are just like Peter and John. Like, I don't know why you're looking at us. These signs are testifying that one has been resurrected and is in heaven. And so I'm going to ask you when you come forward, if you will read your testimonies. It gets kind of wonky when you start just preaching to us. Just read your testimonies and read them with faith. Read them, read them with tears. But we're going to testify to how we've seen the Lord encounter our hearts and say hello to us. So I think we have some students to kick us off first, and then you can file in suit. And we're going to celebrate uh, what the Lord's done in our midst tonight in Jesus' name. sexual brokenness, grief, and bitterness. And I've seen him in every crack and crevice of my life. His loving kindness has led me to repentance. His blood has washed me completely clean and made me pure. He's turned my mourning into dancing. He's turned my sorrow into joy. He's been patient and long-suffering with me, presenting new mercies every morning. And he has sung over me sweet, tender melodies of his love. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my hardness of heart in my former years of growing up as a Buddhist. As a Buddhist, I would pray to a statue who had no life could not talk, could not hear, and could not love. But today, Resurrection Sunday, Jesus came into my life 12 years ago in love as a real and living person who can talk, who can listen, who does love. He desired true and real relationship with me, which Buddhism could never provide. I have seen him transform my heart of works and performing to purity and intimacy. He is faithful, he is trustworthy, he is not dead, he is surely alive. Thank you, Jesus. no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my self-righteousness, 
my wondering, my need for dependence on self, my pride, my anger, my bitterness, my hurt, and my wrong judgments of self and others. I have seen him cleanse my conscience, set me free from law and religion, and love me tenderly by renewing my mind and speaking truth and life into errors that were once filled with lies and deceit. I have seen him bring life to things that seemed hopeless, dead, and lost. And I now know life as a daughter who is completely free, living with a father who has completely loved every part of me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my near death experience at the age of three years old, Ab abandonment, orphan spirit, fatherlessness, victim mentality, sexual abuse, sexual confusion and perversion, effects of verbal and physical abuse, unforgiveness, anger, unbelief, skepticism, lack of identity and direction, no sense of purpose, fear of man, fear of death, insecurity, poverty mindset, and disappointment. And I have seen him come into my life and heal my physical body, father me, pursue me. He has pulled me into his chest and discipled me. He's restored my heart. restored my joy. He has softened my heart where it was hardened. He's given me the Father's heart. He's given me his perspective. He's given me his name. He's also restored my faith when I had none at all. He didn't let go of my hand when I was full of doubt and found myself letting go of his. He restored my identity and now I understand that I am a son and I'm his beloved. He's given me a new sense of worth and confidence and he has restored the way that I view myself. He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. My father taught me what it means to be a man after his heart, his precepts. I am free, I am full of hope and life, and I am his son. Thank you, Jesus. I have, I have seen the Lord risen. I've seen the risen Lord. It's true that he's no longer in the grave, but he's risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my room. I was alone, hurting from a hernia. I didn't go to the hospital, but I started, uh, I stayed in my room worshiping, fresh, uh, and trusted in his healing. I had one hand in the air and one hand on my hernia. And then after a while, I was like, Lord, you deserve both hands. I trusted you. Uh, after a couple minutes, the Lord put, felt his hand go on my shoulder, covering my whole shoulder blade and over the shoulder. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit crying in my room and just like, oh my gosh, and I look down and hernia is gone. And I am just, in. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, but uh, childlike faith saved me that day, just trusting in his word, trusting in the, in the stripes that he took and not taking them for granted because he did them for a reason. Just have more faith, have faith, have that childlike faith and just trust. But uh, I've seen him uh, growing up, I uh, had dreams walking in the clouds and tugging on him in his garments saying, Father, 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 just asking him questions. So um, that's something that I remember since I was like three years old. So it's... I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my selfishness of drinking and weed. And I saw him when he touched me and instantly delivered me of my drinking and selfish ways and set my eyes upon him on the throne. One touch from him changed everything. I saw him three months later when I was in UT Southwestern dying from COVID. I was minutes to a few hours from being intubated. I was in septic shock with organs shutting down when he breathed life into my body. The doctors told my wife this is common and I would go back downhill but he had other plans. I walked out of the hospital five days from entering. I have seen the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my sin, shame, fear of man, insecurity, 
pornography addiction, sexual abuse, same-sex attraction, trauma, and I have seen him completely renew my mind, restore my sexuality and masculinity, give me peace to share the gospel, a true have confidence and love myself like I never thought I could. Because of Jesus, I have true confidence in the future. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the Lord, and it's true that he's no longer in the grave, but is risen from the dead. I'm trying to do this without crying, you guys. He said hello to me in my childhood. I loved him very much, and I asked him to reveal himself to me, and he did this. And I physically saw him, um, and he woke me up from my sleep, and he was sitting in the corner of the room with children on his uh, lap, and just shone and just lit up the whole room. And I was very afraid, and I covered up my, my head, and I peeked out again, and he was still there. Um, I covered up again, peeked out again, and he was gone. But that image has stayed with me always. I wish that was it, but there's more. <laughs> so I have seen him throughout my life manifest himself over and over again. And so most recently, He's given us a child after six miscarriages. My seventh child has been born. Yes, that is my to my husband in the back. Praise God, hallelujah. Okay, when I was 18 years old, I was raped and date rape, and I did terminate the pregnancy, and I had a lot of guilt around that. I wouldn't go to church, and I just felt very separate from God, and so I pulled into church one day because my steering wheel literally turned by itself into a church. Yes, that in and of itself is amazing. I went in and I was, I guess, touched by the Holy Spirit and I just was on the floor totally in the, and I remember the man, the preacher telling me, "For just forgive, just forgive, this isn't you, just forgive. Well, I forgave that person immediately and, and that person came to me again and, and it was just beautiful. So, like, God delivered me even from the guilt of an abortion. Yes. And then he holds me in my worship. As a child, I used to worship him a lot. So he still hugs me and he sways me in my worship, even as a grown woman. Yes. I have, I received a lot of criticism in my family for my faith. And um, unfortunately, sadly, I don't know but I prayed for that, those people to come to Christ, and they came to Christ before they died, but I was left matriarch of my family. So sometimes when we are attacked for our faith, the Lord will use you to lead the next generation. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my bedroom when I was deeply broken in several different addictions, uh, doing witchcraft and transitioning genders. Seen the risen Lord, it is true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my anxiety, my depression, my loneliness, and my anger. I have seen him as my comforter, my father, and my closest friend. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the Lord. He's no longer in the grave, but he's risen from the dead. I said to he said hello to me in my grief and depression, and I've seen him lift my grief and loneliness. Thank you, Jesus. I 
I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my shame from an identity tied to approval seeking and people pleasing and perfectionism. At a pivotal moment, he gently reminded me that Jesus was perfect and yet he was despised and rejected by man. In that instant, truth, that truth dismantled a lifelong lie that perfectionism would keep me safe from rejection. And he's revealed himself as the great comforter, affirming that I can approach him as I am imperfect yet still desired. He's restored my capacity to image, and now I can see his eyes gazing at me, and he's glad to be with me. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen of the Lord in my um, childhood life. My family was very dysfunction, and I was wondering why my mom and dad would always fight. But then one thing happened in my life that I got hit by a car. I was, um, I had just got this bike. My mom told me not to go to the store, but I went anyway, disobeyed her. And then my cousin, they were on their bike. They said, you're on the wrong side of the road. I'm trying to cross over to the right side. Bang, the car hit me. And I, I knew I seemed like I had died. I went through like 10 dimension, but then I, well, not one bone was broken. And then after that, I hopped around for about three months. And then um, uh, the, the preacher's son invited me to church. Uh, and uh, and he, I invited him, he invited me to church, and I gave my life to Jesus. And all through my elementary school, middle school, high school, I was living for Jesus. God called me to preach the gospel in the highways and hedges. I've been preaching over 40 years. Everywhere I go, I share Christ. Hallelujah. Every day, I share Christ in the grocery store, wherever, with love, to preach the gospel. The one reason I'm here today, tonight, because I had a dream about this church, and the Lord sent me here. I've seen these young people going out in the highways and ministering to the word of God. I have seen the risen of the Lord. God bless you. I have seen the risen Lord. It is true that he is no longer in the grave, but is risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my grief after I lost my third baby. He held me as I grieved. He let me scream and wail. He promised he wanted all of me. He wanted the good, the bad, the ugly. He wanted to become my dream. And through it all, he taught me to love myself, love my body. And then I was beloved in the righteousness of God. I have seen him take my mourning and turn it into pure joy. He has become my dream and my deepest desire. I have never felt more alive than I am his beloved. And even though I have not given birth to a biological baby, I have a beautiful three-year-old son named Brave. He was full of life and love. And you probably heard him screaming a few minutes ago. <laughs> but thank you, Jesus. I, I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me. Um, when I was being attacked by demons for almost three months, I actually have seen demons. And um, I tried to commit suicide twice because they would not stop bothering me. And so someone invited me to a prayer meeting and God spoke through someone there and he told them that he would come to me in the night season that they cannot hurt me, that he'll protect me. And I had an out of body experience that night. Ever since then, I have been living for Jesus. And thank you, Jesus.
but I saw him. He appeared one day in my room and touched my head. And that gave me hope to stand in his authority and in my identity in Christ for months. Until one day I woke up and my brain was fully restored. And I walk in peace and that's been five years. But that day that I woke up, I thought, Lord, I feel new. And I kept that to myself. And I went throughout my day until I went to a Bible study. And this sweet older lady just ended the night and prayed in front of everybody and said, oh, and Lord, thank you for making Aggie new. And I was really perplexed because I told nobody. And I went to her and I said, why did you say that? And she said, well, last night at three o'clock, the Lord woke me up and said, I have made Aggie new. And that's forever marked me, is that he I have seen the risen Lord. It is true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my prayer before I killed myself, when I bitterly cried out, when I was in my lowest half a year ago, when I truly lost everything. I have seen him in my life transforming me and continually freeing me from my past love, sexual abuse, depression, and anger. He restored my identity and called me his son and gave me a new name. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but he has risen from the dead. He said hello to me a few times in the church when I grew up, but I chose not to listen. Through the pain of childhood sexual abuse, I chose through my anger that God was not real. How could he be? The selfish desires of sexual immorality, pornography, and partying to mask the pain of these wounds were the ways of my life. Baptized in the bathtub at Monday night, Bible study. Um, God started to move in my life again, and he healed my depression, anger, washed selfish, worldly desires, wanting the best of everything to be in it. Um, changing me and chiseling me made me the righteous man of God, seated with him to be chiseled and formed for my future wife and children. the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my dead works and being worn out of doing church as a PK. The accusation in my mind and the anxiety that goes with that, my lust, my living of double lives, living in an unstable home, my hope deferred heart, hurt from the church in isolation. And I have seen him awaken my heart to burn for him, revealing to me the Holy Spirit, saying I am pure. He showed me he's actually so gentle to me. He restored my mind, redeemed my innocence, became my complete stability, healed my heart that I never thought could be whole again, gave me dove eyes, and has made my heart glad. He has sent me into family and community, and he gave me a burning heart and desire that his body is so beautiful, and he will have his people. I have seen the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my closet three years ago at my mom's house. I was a former atheist slave to PC gaming, looking for something real all my life. I was tormented by a broken family, traumatized with neglect and insecurity. I had legions of demons afflicting infirmity in my stomach, causing inflammation all across my body. I no longer have that pain. I am now fully confident in my identity and my faith is stronger than ever. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he is no longer in the grave but has risen from the dead. 
He said hello to me in my college apartment in, 20, in 2019 through the words of my suicide letter to my family. He spoke over me of the love that he has for me. He began to fill me with a joy and hope that I had, I had never felt. I have seen him, seen him as my father and ultimate comforter. He has been my safe place. He has transformed my mind and restored my sense of worth in him. To him, I am eternally grateful. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen Lord. It is true that he is no longer in the grave, but he has risen from the dead. He has said hello to me in the valley of death and the loss of my mother. I have seen him as the one who walks with the brokenhearted, the father to the fatherless and brings life to what seemed dead. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen Lord. It is true that he is no longer in the grave, but he has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my depression, anger, and hopelessness, and my decision to end my life. And I have seen him tell me, I love you. And if you'll take one step towards me, I will come all the rest of the way. Six months later, he said hello to me in my terminal cancer diagnosis. And I have seen him heal me miraculously when the doctor said there was a 0% chance of living. That was 18 years ago. I am alive and not dead, and I will declare the works of the Lord. He is mine, and I am His. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the risen Lord. It's true that he's no longer in the grave, but it's risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my depression, anxiety, jail cell, in my homelessness, my drug addiction, my divorce, my deep pain, abandonment, pride, and greatest sins. And I have seen him heal my heart, deliver me from anxiety, depression, drug addiction, and homelessness. He's gotten me off the streets, healed my ailments, delivered my life from the pit, given me a family, given me a home. He's taken me through healing of my divorce and he's restoring my marriage. I've seen the risen Lord. It is true that he is no longer in the grave, but has risen from the dead. He said hello to me in my broken heart over my family separation. And I've seen him as my father, protector, my comfort, and the healer of my brokenness. He's given me fullness of life as his daughter and brought me out of a spirit of orphanhood and feelings of rejection. He's also freed my mind of anxiety, depression, and bitterness. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Hey, if, you'll, if you'll grab your uh, communion, we're gonna go to the table of the Lord. And uh, if you shared a testimony, I wanna thank you. Those are precious pearls. And uh, thank you for honoring us with what the Lord's done in your life. And, I immediately think of his body tonight, uh, that we are his body. And to hear the testimonies of what he's done in the midst of this body, uh, Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor. And this is the bread of life, it is a daily bread. And uh, uh, one of the, I think of two things, I think of, of healing, uh, physical healing, I think of relational healing. And so if you come to the table and you need one of those two things, would you just ask him right now? Would you just say, Jesus, thank you for your broken body? And would you apply this reality to your life? If it's, um, if it's your marriage, if it's a sibling, if it's a family member, if it's a coworker, maybe it's a, a diagnosis, but just bring it to the table and we receive this, Lord, as our portion. We receive this, Lord Jesus, 
as faith food. (laughs) This is faith food. This is food for your faith. You're feeding your faith in light of what he's provided. And so thank you for your broken body. We receive it. In Jesus' name, receive the body of Christ. And for the shed blood. The Bible says in Leviticus 17, verse 3, that the life of a being is in the blood. And Lord, your life is in this cup. And you came to give us life and life abundantly. And that is found in your shed blood. Lord, you shed your life for us. And Lord, we receive your life tonight. And I just declare that there's no sin in this room that is too more powerful than your blood. There's no transgression, no decision we've made, nothing we've done recently. It could have been as recent as today, yesterday, this week, or maybe it was months, years, or decades ago. We declare your blood is sufficient. Your blood speaks a better word. Your blood is warm. Your blood, Lord, flows. And we want to put our faith in what you Father, see when we drink your son's blood. This is your son's blood, and so we receive it as valid for, our, uh, for, for remission of sins. If it's valid in your eyes, it's valid in ours. And so we put our faith, Lord, in what you see when you look at your son's shed blood, knowing that he conquered the grave. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Receive the blood of the covenant. I'm going to invite our ministry team up. And I really felt more strongly than any other service. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to sing a song here. And as we're singing, uh, the ministry team's going to be here. I felt so strongly tonight that there are those in this room and you don't know Jesus. You do not have a relationship with Jesus. You're not walking with him. And I felt like tonight was an intersection. It was a crossroads in your life. And I felt like you're going to remember Easter of 2024 as the moment where a divine intersection came and you chose the road of life. You chose to give your life to Jesus tonight. You, I, I felt like the Lord was saying, stop playing games with me. Stop playing games with me. Stop playing games with me. This is life and death. This is eternity. It's at stake. And there is an hour of mercy and grace that you are in. And he is beckoning you. You don't know what tomorrow holds. I felt an urgency in the call tonight. Some of you need to get right with God. You need to get right with Jesus. And I'm not talking about praying a prayer. I'm talking about surrendering your life. I'm talking about walking with him day in and day out. Stop playing games. It's very easy to do that in Dallas, Texas. In fact, I even felt for some, this is your second service this weekend. And you're, you're, you're moving from church to church and experience to experience. And he's trying to rattle you to awaken you. You're looking for him in the things of God. But God tonight is confronting you. And he's saying, I, I am here. Would you just surrender your life to me? Uh, Some of you need to confess sin. I really sense there was a confession of sin, a bringing out into the light. You're to confess your sins to one another so that you may be forgiven. There's something about you disclosing your heart and your life to someone else. Yes, you can pray a prayer, and he hears that prayer, and he answers that prayer, but there's something about walking with others, walking in the light together. I know that you may not know some of these people personally. It's okay, but you need to confess I have a problem. I have a life of duplicity. I really felt the Lord confronting that and his mercy and his love and his grace tonight. So if you would stand as we're singing this song, some of you need to run to the altar. You don't need to walk. You need to get down here as soon as possible to get right with the Lord tonight. The altar is open. Come and receive. Even if you just need prayer, direction, healing, whatever it is, come and receive that as we sing this song. We love you. Good
not hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the boast of sin and grave The heavens are roaring the praise of your glory For you were raised to life again And you have no every testimony in the room. Oh, we give you honor and praise, Lord, for what you've done. Oh, how you've shown up, Lord. How you've touched us. How you've spoken, how you've revealed yourself, Lord, we give you honor. Oh, we give you honor and praise. Yours is 
the name above every other name. Every other name will bow at the name of Jesus. Every other name will bow.
Everybody say this with me. I have seen the Lord. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, say it again. I have seen the Lord. Look at somebody else and tell them, I have seen the Lord. Look at somebody else. I have seen the Lord. Come on, look at somebody else. Tell them, I have seen the Lord. Look at somebody else. Tell them, I have seen the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hey, close your eyes. Hold out your hands. Let me bless you. Thank you, Father, for your presence. It truly is transforming. We've used so many testimonies and so many words trying to express what you've done, but you truly have transformed us. You've made us in your image. You brought us from death to life, and we're so thankful for that. Father, thank you for your presence tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his bright, beautiful countenance that shines within his radiant gaze. And everywhere you put your foot, may it be counted for the Lord. Everywhere you put your hand, may it be the work of the Lord. Father, thank you for your presence among us. We're truly amazed by you. So thankful for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We'll be here at 6 o'clock in the morning. We'll see you there. <laughs> Love you guys. Wow, hallelujah, welcome back. We're here again, I've got a new friend with me. Again, my name is Emily, I've got Halen with me. Hi guys. Wow, I don't know about you guys, but I was so encouraged hearing the testimony 
of Jesus through real lives who have truly experienced the resurrection power of Jesus. Either we are all crazy <laughs> or Jesus is really alive and He still has resurrection power. And I just wanna speak to those of you who've been watching online and your heart is stirring after hearing Pastor Michael, after hearing all of these testimonies and your heart is just longing to experience the resurrection power of Jesus. Maybe you feel dead in sin. Maybe you feel dead in works. Maybe you have a dream that's dead, a marriage that's dead, a situation that feels lifeless and laying in a tomb like his body once did. And I wanna speak to you. I know I can't, that can't speak to you physically, but I wanna look into your eyes. I wanna look into your face and tell you that His power is real. His power to save and not just for the people in this room, but for you. And if your heart was stirred at the end of tonight, hearing those testimonies and you have rededicated your life to Jesus or maybe surrendered your full life to Jesus for the very first time, we want to connect with you. And so I would just invite you to email info at you, like the letter U, room.org. Info at youroom.org. It should also be in the description of our YouTube channel, but we wanna connect with you and celebrate what the Lord has done and remind you you're not alone. We love you. And so Jesus, I thank you for the way that you moved on hearts tonight. I thank you for the way that you are still the resur resurrection, the way and the life, that there is one way to the Father. There is one way to eternal life and it is you, Jesus. And we exalt you over every household, every person watching tonight. And we say, come and have your reward through everyone watching. We bless you with the peace, the shalom of the Holy Spirit. And we love you. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Again, if you are wanting to connect with someone after maybe making a decision this resurrection weekend, please email us. We want to connect with you and help you get plugged in to a church in your area. If you're in Dallas, you're more than welcome to come and be a part of our community. We love you and we'll see you in the prayer room this week.